Okay, um, good afternoon class. So today we're looking at the grade 11 cycle test 2 of 2023. You guys got your question paper, your scripts back. Those of you who are absent yesterday, you got your script. We must do yesterday, no? Did you miss us? Oh. You are studying. And all the work you missed yesterday in maths, I'm going to learn the... Now you see, now, now I'm going to go cry later on. My wife won't know, why am I crying? Well, then she will realize afterwards, the learner was... Like you. Okay. People, here we go. The question says, simplify to a single trigonometric ratio. Or the... Or the ratio that is so, the, so we got sine 540 degrees plus x times cos 90 plus x minus cos 180 minus x times cos negative x. So this is the reduction. Of course, we need the cos diagram. So it's all stations to play on. There's 180. That is normally 360. And we know 90 and 270. So 540 is over 360. So what do we do? We subtract 360 from 540. 540 minus 360 is 180. So that is simply sine of 180 plus x. Which quadrant is that in people? Third quadrant. Sine is negative. So it's negative sine x times. 90 plus. Which quadrant is um, second quadrant? It's cos positive or negative? Negative. What changes to? Sine of x. 180 minus. Which quadrant is that in? 180 minus. The uh, second quadrant is cos positive or negative? Making this negative a positive, and that is the same as saying 360 minus x. Not so, cos 360 minus x is which quadrant? Fourth quadrant is a sine, and is a cos positive negative in the fourth quadrant? Positive. So it's times cos of x. So that is, of course, going to give us a positive sine squared x plus cos squared x, which is 1. Okay. Any confusion here? No. Right, let's carry on for lives. 1.2.1. So we have here, given that 13 cos theta plus 5 is equal to 0, in which quadrant does it? There was, I hope you guys got the message in time, we had said that and sine of theta is less than zero, which means to say it is negative. Okay, so we need to make first cos the subject of the formula. So cos theta is negative 5 over 13. So this tells us in which quadrant is cos negative. Is negative in quadrant, uh, the all stations to clear one, is quadrant 2 and 3. Sine is negative. Sine is negative in quadrant 3 and 4. So therefore it has to be in the third quadrant. Okay. The third quadrant. Then the question says, without using a calculator, determine the value of tan of 180 minus theta. So of course we're drawing it in the third quadrant. That is your theta angle, of course. So tan of 180 minus theta is then going to be in quadrant two. So sine is, tan is negative tan of theta. So it's negative. We need that ratio above. So that is adjacent of hypotenuse. So that's your theta angles. Your adjacent is 5. Hypotenuse is 13. Now where does the negative belong? It belongs to the 5. Why? So the 5 is on the negative part to be exact. Okay. The 13 will never be negative. Okay. Apply by taking so then get 12. So it's negative 12. So it's on the negative part of your y axis here. So it's, uh, 10 is opposite, which is negative 12 over adjacent, which is negative 5, gives you an answer of negative 12 over 5. Okay. The next question, it says prove the identity. So I'm going to work on the left hand side, of course. Get rid of the brackets, so it's going to be 2 minus 2 cos squared x uh, minus cos squared x times tan squared x. Not so. 
But tan squared x can be written as sine squared x over cos squared x. People, that's naturally over 1. That cancels. Which leaves you with 2 minus 2 cos squared x minus sine squared x. But if I look at the right hand side, I see there's only signs on the right hand side. Can you see that, people? So what I do is I take cos squared and I change it to its equivalent in terms of sine. So it's 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x. Which now gives you 2 minus 2 plus, I'm getting rid of the brackets, uh, 2 sine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay, so that cancels. And 2 sine squared x minus sine squared x is of course sine squared x which is equal to the right hand side. Okay. The next question asks with regards to for which values of x is the given identity undefined. Now you must remember that, remember last year we drew the tan graph. You guys remember the tan graph? And the tan graph had what? Yes, you remember. Yeah, yeah, the three graphs. Yes, that is the point at which the graph is undefined. So if you're looking at from 0 to 180 and I draw the tan graph, and why I put it in the tan graph is because here's a tan here, tan squared. So it's undefined at 90 degrees. So remember, this is what the tan graph looks like. Just a reminder here. And 270. You guys remember? So from 0 to 180, where is it undefined? 90. So x is equal to 90 degrees. The solution I was looking for it. Okay. That was just some uh, reflect, some uh, reflection on something that happened or was asked sometime last year. Okay. So I wanted to see who's recapping and all of that and it's clear interruption madison campbell can you please report to the office madison campbell to the office now people if you got cos the 23 is equal to p people in your first quadrant you can draw it in the first quadrant if you like or without the quadrant itself so 23 people what does cos stand for adjacent over hypotenuse so that is 23 my adjacent to 23 is p hypotenuse is 1 i apply pythagoras and i get 1 squared is equal to that opposite side squared plus your, uh, p squared we take p squared over so your opposite the root thereof will be 1 minus p squared okay all agree with that and also what is the size of this angle here 180 minus 23 minus 90 which is 67 67 Right, you guys understand? Right, so let's do our thing. People, 203 degrees in which quadrant? Third. Third. I was in a meeting. No, no problem. I want to do it. I'm doing it. I didn't even go to the service. No, I didn't. The spices. Chikran, right? I'm trying. Are you selling? Yeah. Okay, Chikran. Okay, so 203 is in which quadrant? Third quadrant, I'll get the third quadrant. 180 plus. So it's going to be 180 plus what? 23. So it's going to be negative cos 23. Cos 23 is P. So the answer is negative P. Do you guys understand? Alright, so that's minus P. People, let's look at the next one. Which quadrant? Um, 293 is in which quadrant? 293. Fourth quadrant. Huh? Fourth quadrant. How do you get in the fourth quadrant? 360 minus. So, three, so that would be cos 360 minus 67. Which is positive cos 67. Not so. So cos of 67, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be the square root of 1 minus p squared over 1, which is the square root of 1 minus p squared. Do you guys understand? The last question in question 1.4. Tan, uh, tan, tan 23 is opposite over adjacent. 
So it's the square root of 1 minus p squared over. Is there any problem there, people? Any confusion? Huh? No. Right, let's carry on with our lives. 2.3. I think I'm missing something. What am I missing? Let's get the paper. See what am I missing? Two point one. Complete the statement that followed. Um, complete the following theorem. Opposite angles of a cyclic body are supplementary. So the opposite angles of a cyclic body are supplementary. Okay. Do you all okay with that? No? Why didn't I cut that? And I didn't cut 2.2. Two. Shucks. But 2.2 .2 is a proof, no? Okay, so just for... You can find the proof in the... In the I'll put the link to the proof in the description box below. Okay, so 2.2, .2, the proof, it will be found in the description box below. Okay. Stranger, didn't it? But anyway, sorry about that. Yes, miss. Jamie Puss, is she perhaps in your class? She is. Can you send it to the office for the bags, please, sir? Yo, Jamie. What do we know? Huh? You know? You look okay. Oh, you're not feeling good. Okay. But anyway, here we go. We are told that in the diagram, always the center of the circle. ACB. Always the center of the circle, ACB. Right. Now we are told that TA and TB are tangents to the circle at A and B respectively, which means to say that order. People, if A and B from point T are tangents, then BT has to be equal to A T. Why? Stand by. Tangent from common point. People, if O is the center of the circle, then that length is equal to that length. Why? Because of radii. Not so. Then we are told that O and T are joined. Then we are told that BTM is not 110 degrees. The question says why is angle OBT equal to 90? OBT, is, why is that angle 90? Because radius perpendicular to tangent. Number two. In number two, they ask you to prove that A O B T is a cyclic point. There's three ways of proving a cyclic point. Opposite sides of, oh sorry, opposite angles are supplementary, exterior angles equal to interior opposite, or the bow tie. Not so. Which one are we going to use here? Of course, opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, as it's easy to prove that that is 90. So we're going to firstly say that OAT is equal to 90 degrees. Why? The radius perpendicular to tangent to 90. So we say since OAT plus OBT equals 180. We're going to add those two angles together is 180. Therefore, OBTA is a cyclic point. Why? Because opposite angles are supplementary. Okay. 
So that means to say, all cyclic properties, cyclic quad properties, are evident in quadrilateral OBTA. You guys understand? Right, this is question number three. In question three, we're asked to prove that T1 is equal to T2. But you say, hang on. If I did, angle T1 equals X. People, do I have to do this? No. Okay, it just makes things easier for me. Okay. If I did uh, T1 equal to X, if we can prove that T2 is X, we've done the job. Of course, for three marks, I'm not going to go straight and say T1. No, it must first go to a common angle there after and then come back. So, which angle is T1 also equal to? T1 is also equal to B1. So why is B1 equal to X? What do you see? The bow tie. You see that people? Remember that OBTA is a cyclic quad. Not so? So with that in mind, so that is going to be 90X because and in the same segment and it's coming from arc uh, oh wait, you don't have to say the arc, okay? so this is x then we know that a1 is also equal to x so why is angle a1 equal to x? because angles opposite equal sides and it's the fact that it's a radius not so the radius radii and then, therefore, T2 is equal to XY, angle in the same segment, and it's coming from arc, um, OB. Okay. So, therefore, T1 is equal to T2, which is equal to X. People, there's another way of doing it. I could have said um, that intra-angle uh, OA, OAT and triangle OAT and OBT. What can we say? We can say that OB is equal to OA, Y, radius. Not so. BT is equal to AT. Why? Tangent from external or common point. Okay? And then OT is a common, it's a common side. So therefore triangle, therefore triangle OAT is congruent to triangle OBT. Why? Side, side, side. Or I could have used that 90 and that 90 and said um, that 90 and that 90, I must use this side and the hypotenuse is going to be RHS or that side and this and here would be side angle side. So there's four different ways just by the looks of it probably more to prove that that's a side to I mean that, that uh, two angles are equal. From here we conclude therefore T1 is equal to T2 on the counter triangle um, OAT is congruent to triangle OBT. Okay, but you guys understand? Any confusion there? Whichever method you use, you will get the full mark for it, okay? Sir? Yes? For example, you will take the first question, right? This question? Yeah. Yes? In this one here? If you didn't get that question right, I mean... Oh, you're asking, can I use the fact that this, at that point, which you didn't get, yeah. you can use it in your next question? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Make a note of it, people. You can use it, because it's linked. Your, most of the time, your previous question is needed for your question that follows. Okay.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off here as I need the space. Last question in question C says angle C. Let's calculate angle C. So looking at this here, angle C lies here. But we know there's a link between angle at center is twice angle at circumference. So we need the, the sum of A and A1 and A, um, A1 and A2. Not so. However, this is an exterior angle of a cyclic one here. So O1 and O2 is 110 degrees, and that's going to be 55 degrees. Okay, so let's lay that out quickly. So we say, firstly, um, AOB is equal to 110 degrees. Why? Exterior angle of cyclic pot. So that's 110. Or you could have said O1 plus O2, or whatever you want to say. Yeah? Then angle C is equal to 55 degrees. Angle at center is equal to 2 times angle at circumference. Okay. Any confusion there? Alright, don't forget the proof to 2.2 can be found in the description box below. Let's look at question 3.1. In question 3.1, we are told that in the time, um, We are told in the diagram, O is the center of the circle, M and P R is a cyclic quadrilateral. So if O is the center of the circle, and can I say this twice angle is a circumference? Okay, many other things we can derive from here, that lengths are equal and so on and so on. Okay. Then we are told that M N P R, M N P R is a cyclic quad, which means to say that angle plus that angle is equal to 180 degrees and many other things, okay? Why? Why is it 180? Because the opposite angles of a cyclic quad is supplementary there. Then we are told that um, um, SN is a diameter. People, if SN is a diameter, what do we know? We know that surely M1 and M2 is 90 degrees, okay? Called MS and radii OR are drawn. M2 is 64 degrees. The team determine the, we're giving the reasons, the size of the following angles. We start with angle P. But we spoke about that already, not so. So angle P is equal to? Angle P and that angle has a relationship. So it's 180 minus 64, which is 116 degrees. Why? Opposite angles of cyclic quadrant supplement. Just right side. People number two. So I put here 116. Also, start populating a diagram so that, so that one glance we can see what we have in the diagram. Okay. Look at number two. They want you to work out M1, then O1. Okay, M1. We spoke about that as well, not so. So M1 is equal to 90 minus 64 degrees. Why? Angle in semicircle. So 90 minus 64 is 26 degrees. Okay. Any confusion here? No? Let's go to the next one, 01. You see, just by reading that information, we already know most of the angles. Okay, when we mentioned most of the angles already. So, um, O1, as we said, angle at center, twice angle at circumference. So O1 is equal 
the double 26, which is 50 to the y. Angle at center is equal to 2 times angle at circumference. Okay. Is there any confusion there? No. Okay. So at this point, you guys will got full marks. No? With your understanding. Does it give you exactly the same sum in your next exit? And it's like, you haven't seen these things before. People in the, um, we are told that O is the center of the circle. People in O is the center of the circle, what do we know? OT is equal to OS, radia. Okay. Then we are told that SAT, SAT, or circle SAT, which is inscribed, inscribes inside, triangle PQR, and it's touching, of course, the sides of the triangle there. PQ, QR, and PR are tangents to the circle. People, if it's a tangent, we know that that angle is equal to T1. We know that T2 is equal to... No, we don't. Why is that not the case? Why, why can't we apply the angle theorem then? Because O is not touching the circumference of the circle. If it touches the circumference, then that angle will be equal to that angle. Okay? But since it's not touching the circumference, you can't go with the, with the tan core theorem. Okay? Also, if this is tangents, we know that TP is equal to PS. Why? Tangents from common point. Okay? And many, many things from this number can derive from that. Okay. First question says the three marks. No. The question says. Uh, prove that P O uh, P S O T is a cyclic point. P O S T. P S O T. Okay, there we go. Must prove that it's a cyclic point. Can we prove cyclic points, people? Opposite angles are supplementary. Exterior angles of the interior opposite of the both Okay, people, we know this is going to be the same as previous one, that's going to be 90 and 90, not so. So we're firstly going to say that OTP is equal to OSP, which is equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because radius perpendicular to then. So we say since OTP plus OSP is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, OTPS is a cyclic point. Why? Because the opposite angles are supplementary. So this year all cyclic quadrilateral properties are evident here. Now you all understand. What I'm going to do is I'm just put dots there so that I know that it's a cyclic quad. Okay, also we don't want to overpopulate the diagram because we don't want to be confused with all that information and all of those things. Okay. Okay. Let's look at 3.2.2. Yeah, we are told to prove that OS is a tangent to the circle. Always the tangent to the circle through SPE. SPE. So in other words, I must prove that S1 is equal to P2. If I prove that S1 is equal to P2, I've done the job. Why? 
because if O is was the tangent to the circle SEP, then those angles would have been equal. Why? Because of the tan theorem. Not so. So when we start, we say that S1 equal X. So S1 is equal to X, T1 is equal to X. T1 is equal to XY. Angles opposite, equal sides. Y is the radius. I think this is very similar to the previous question. Eh? It's just that, yeah, we're proving it at tan quotient, uh, the part of the And But T1 is also equal to P2. So P2 is also equal to X, Y, angled in the same segment. And it's coming from R, OS. Okay, let's take the calculator away then. Okay. Maybe half an hour, I thought it was going to take us 15 minutes. Okay. So what do we say now? Since S1 is equal to P2, since angle S1 is equal to P2, which is equal to x. Therefore, OS is a tangent to circle through ESP. And what's your reason for that? Angle between line and chord equals angle in alternate signal. Or you could have written the converse of the angle here. Okay. You get the full mark there anyway. And then the bonus question. Well, I was sad to say that nobody got this right. Even though the system wants to work. Question say you must make all the subject of the formula. Not so. There is many ways of doing this. Okay. So firstly, what's my LCM? P R T or T P R. So that must be multiplied by P T. Uh, P, uh, P R sorry P R times S minus two. This must be multiplied by R T. So it's one into R T plus. This must be multiplied by P T. Okay. So I'm gonna multiply that in. I'm going to get SPR minus 2PR equals RT plus PT. Since we want to calculate R, I take all the terms of R to one side. So it's SPR minus 2PR minus RT equals PT. We're going to take out the common factor of R. So it's SP minus 2P minus T is equal to PT. Now I divide by SP minus 2P minus T both sides. And of course that cancels. So R is equal to PT over 5P minus 2P minus T. Okay? R is the subject of the form. Otherwise, if I keep 1 over R on one side, the equal sign, that I get over it becomes S minus 2 over T minus 1 over P. The LCM is TP, so it's going to be SP minus 2P minus T. It's 1 over R. Okay, that's much easier. So we take the reciprocal both If I take it, since we've got a fraction either side, we can take the reciprocal of both sides. So R over 1 is R, which is TP over is P minus 2P minus T. Okay. Which is fairly simple from it. Okay. People you'll find the paper and its memo in the description box below as well as the link to the proofs to all um, Euclidean geometry 
that is needed for the final NCS exam. So with that link, you'll also find the grade 12 Euclidean geometry. Okay.